Florida Everglades is one of God's unique creations. It's been formed over millions of years by the drainage of fresh water in the middle part of Florida. That's where it starts. We have rainfall every year that exceeds four or five feet. All that water has got to go somewhere. The highest point is just north of Lake Okeechobee. It falls about a foot every 50 to 100 miles as you move south. Just that slight altitude change makes a flow of fresh water running to the south. Over years of time, that water is drained and created just thousands of fingers that break out into the Gulf of Mexico. As those fingers start to branch out, they form bays, they form shorelines, they form oyster bars. This is the perfect environment for the common snook. Oh, my hands are <laughs> like locked up. <laughs> I've been fishing the Everglades for close to 40 years. And I learned this area long before GPS existed. You didn't look at your GPS and, and follow your way to a bay that you'd, you'd think that's going to be fishy. That didn't exist when I started fishing this place. When you first visit this environment, every shoreline looks the same. It takes years, hundreds of days to before things start to look different. Before you start acknowledging that, you no, know, I know that creek goes here and that river goes there and this bay leads to this other creek and it's just this labyrinth of bays, creeks, shorelines, hundreds of miles of it. I went up in a plane when I first started learning this area and took actual photos took photographs and laid these photographs out and spent hours looking over these things, studying these photos. And I would take these photos in the boat and figure out how to get to, to the main river that was on the, on the photograph and then figure out how to get to all the branches off of that photograph. When you learn something that way, one, you gotta be passionate about wanting to learn it. And two, you learn it in a way that is so in-depth that you know every nook and cranny of that whole environment. And that's why the, the Everglades and the Snook hold a pl special place in my heart because I've spent thousands of days trying to learn where to catch them and how to navigate these waters. And it's a place that when you leave the dock, you don't encounter another person often in a 10 or 12 hour day. There's not too many places on the planet you can go to and have that experience. What do you think? I always try to imagine that I'm the fish, you know, when I touch it, I compress it, I feel the point, you know? Yeah. I think it's good. So I grew up fishing offshore with my dad quite a bit. He used to take me out all the time. We never did any of the technical stuff or anything like that. It was always a good time, and then once I met Rob, he introduced me to the whole inshore deal, sight fishing and the back country and all that and really blew my mind. I never I never knew we had that here. Once I uh, saw it for the first time, I was just like blown away that I had never been introduced to that for so long. Oh yeah, it's pretty good fish there.
That's a decent. <clears throat> Just stop right here. Yeah, he didn't hesitate. Oh yeah, it's a nice Everglades snook, buddy. Oh yeah. You know what? That's good guiding because I would not have stopped. I would have stopped on that side. Yeah. I wouldn't have fished it. We stopped here the other day and blew a bunch of fish out, so we didn't even catch one. You didn't even what? We didn't even catch one last time. Right. We just blew them all out. Well, you knew they were here. Yeah. Nice fish. Great fish. Thank you. Well, of course. The snook is a unique fish. It's a tropical environment fish. It doesn't tolerate cold very well. On, in Florida, we have snook on both coasts, east and west. Pretty much when you get to the midpoint of Florida going north, that's about their tolerance zones cold-wise. Worldwide, they're in Texas, South Texas, they're in Belize, they're in Mexico, they're, they're in Costa Rica, they're, they're in other places, but here in the Everglades, I find that the snook is a unique fish because of the environment. Some situations are sight fishing, some situations are, are casting to shorelines, some situations are casting to overhung trees that you had to skip a bait under. So the angling skill, a diverse angling skill is required. It's an awesome game fish. Once hooked, they jump, they run. Sometimes they eat aggressively. Sometimes they're very finicky. It's one of the most diverse fish that we fish for in South Florida. Oh, that was a nicer boil there. Oh, mm. that is a better fish. Mm -hmm. Oh, got him. That one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty cool. That was awesome. He got, pretty, he got pretty damn committed after he missed it three times. <laughs> yeah. He just kept coming back. Yeah. Thankfully. I just, even back up maybe a little bit, Pete. That might, that might have been multiple fish there. I don't know. They're all concentrated in all these little shallow mud pockets. Oh, there he goes. What's that? They're sitting in all the little shallow yeah, mud pockets. Yeah, I noticed that. That was a nice fish. It was. Thank you. Yeah, man. Just hold tight one second. Let me get a new bait. This one's pretty torn up. If it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen now. Nice water color. Mm, yeah, water color's perfect. A lot of people think you want gin clear water, you know? And I find that when the water's super clear, where you can see everything. You don't see much. You don't see much. Yeah. But then when it's real dirty, you don't see much either. It's kind of, you want that in between. Right, so just kind like of this. Like iced tea color. Yep. I think it has to do with the salinity, you know, the right amount of salinity versus the fresh. It does make sense. The Everglades snook prefers brackish. It prefers the zone where the fresh meets the salt almost in a 50-50 state. You know you're in that zone when you look at the color. The clear, clear fresh water that's draining out of the Everglades is exactly what it sounds like. It's clear. It's too clear. The bait doesn't live there. 
the salt becomes kind of a, a dark brown, sometimes muddy, depending on where you're at. Almost like a coffee. You want something in the iced tea zone, something in between. That's when, you, when you're in the zone where the fresh meets the salt, you're in a 50-50, half fresh, half salt, and you have freshwater baits and saltwater baits that inhabit these zones. It's the environment that's perfect for a snook to make a living. Oh, yeah. It's not as big as the one we just saw, but it's not a bad one. No, it's not. Uh, there's a whole, there's more fish coming out at 12, right to us. A nice fish, really nice fish. Let me get this one off real quick. He's just sitting there. Okay. Of course I can't get him on the hook. Hold on, bait's all jacked up. Minus about. Right at 12:30, like 40, 50 feet, like 40 feet, he sunk down to the bottom. Right at that. Right at that. Yeah, right at that. Not the one we wanted, but I'll take it. That other one just kind of sunk out right there. He should be like at 12:30 somewhere. The snook is finicky. They they their their feeding habits change with the weather change. At one moment you think, okay, these are going to be great snook conditions, and you don't get a bite. And then when you least expect it, there's this huge snook bite going on where every cast or every other cast you're getting a bite. That's kind of the the, the lure to me about this fish. Ooh. Came back. <laughs> <laughs> that was badass. <laughs> that was a good good amount of really nice fish. Uh is that one right there at 12:30 like 20 feet? I just saw something going left, right, right close, thing about the snook also is it has this very black lateral line that runs from the gills all the way to the tail. This lateral line is used as a, basically a sense. It's, it's like when you feel the presence of someone approaching you, the snook uses that lateral line for defense and also uses that lateral line to detect bait approaching. So it knows when to, when to flee and it knows when to eat. A snook's tail is broad. It has like these giant paddles, the bottom and the top. It's made for short bursts of speed, which is one of the reasons when you hook one, they have the ability to get you back in the mangroves. The first thing you, you think about when you hook a big snook, especially when you're in the mangrove country, is keeping him out of the trees. Because nine times out of 10, that's his means for escape. And to me, I love big tarpon, especially with a big, you know, big tarpon with a fly rod. That's, that's, if it's my last day to fish tomorrow, that's what I would do. But if I had two days, the second, second day would be spent snook fishing in the Everglades.
first time I went fishing with Rob, he, he asked me if I wanted to go experience the Everglades for the first time. He asked me if I've ever, I'd ever been there, which I had. But I've never, I had never really fished the backcountry and done the whole technical deal back there. We went out, caught a bunch of snook and redfish and trout, and it was probably one of the coolest trips of my life, considering I had never experienced that. And he introduced me to all that and really blew my mind. To me, Peter and I's common thread is that we're passionate about fishing and we're super passionate more than anything about learning the fishing game. I've been doing this 30 plus years and I still, every day I leave the dock, I'm trying to learn something new. And Peter's been fishing pretty heavily for about 10 years now and every day he leaves the dock, he's trying to learn something new. So we share that passion of learning the game, understanding the species, learning the terrain, learning the environment, and everything it has to offer. There's a particular sound when a snook eats a bait on the surface, whether it be a mullet, whether it be a, a pilchard, whether it be a shrimp, or whether it be your bait that you've cast. A big, badass snook, when it eats bait on the surface, it sounds like a 50 cal sniper rifle. There's no question that that was a big snook when you hear that sound. And that's one of the mistakes about this fish, because we hear it. We're pulling down these shorelines sometimes. And often, because of the boat pressure going down the shoreline, bait fish start running ahead of the boat. And the snook will give themselves away because this bait's running ahead and all of a sudden the snook is laying there under the mangroves and all of a sudden the school of bait swims over them and boom, you know, you see this giant explosion 100 feet ahead of the boat. A little too far to cast, you can't reach, the, reach them, but you know there's one up there. And that's kind of the intrigue to this whole fishery. You see how he ate that? Oh, that looked like a good fish. He, he did, but he didn't like eat it. He just like came Swiped up and- it wipe to the tail. Is that a tarpon? Uh, might have been. Sure sounded like. There he is. Oh yeah. What is it? Oh, it's a good snook. Big snook, bro. It's a really nice snook. Oh yeah. And he went the right way. <laughs> Usually they go that way. <laughs> <laughs> the stake up right here, I think we're good. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's a real one. It's not as big as that one that swiped at it a minute ago, but he's a damn good fish. Really nice fish. <clears throat> Oh, oh yeah, we'll take that one. <laughs> yeah! Oh yeah. That's all you, bro. That was all you. You told me fish the left side. You told you that. picked the spot. That was all you. That's why we caught that fish. That was That's great really, guiding. Thank you. Great guiding. Wow. Let me take your picture with him real quick. I want to remember you get it. Your picture. No, I want you to hold it because I wouldn't have caught him without you. you I caught that fish because of you, so. That's awesome. Thank you. They are such badass fish, Look you know? Look at that thing. I saw him coming, boom. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> That's the one we want right there, brother. <laughs> it was awesome to catch a great snook today. The most awesome part about that snook was it was caught in a place that I had never fished. It was caught in a place that I, I fished with a guy 
that I introduced to the Everglades that he discovered this place all on his own. He called it. He'd been talking about it for an hour and a half throughout the day. I, we have to visit this spot. I think there's gonna be fish there. And I caught the best fish of the day in Peter's place. That's what's special about today to me, was sharing that moment with Peter. And it, and it was really proud to see how this kid has just enhanced his fishing abilities. <laughs>